Hey everyone, you're watching Ash on Comics. Happy New Year. Oh boy. Action Comics 1006. Still getting this. Oh, oh look at there's a little, little kissy mark on Superman's face. Because, you know, someone's got to kiss you on, on New Year's. Whoo, boy! Just finished reading this book, and, um, yeah. The good news is, it's not as bad as Harley Quinn 56. I uh, did a review of that book, and, jeez, that book will numb you. It'll, every book will shine when, when you, uh, you read that book first. Uh, I didn't remember what happened in Action Comics 106, or 1005. I was sitting down reading this book, and... I was like formulating my ideas on how to review this, and I was like, "Wait, I don't even remember what how it ended. What what happened?" Um, but I will remind you because I went back and watched my review, or I'll just watch the end of my review on 1005, and he fights the Red Cloud girl, and uh, at the end we get the reveal of who she is. The end. That was. 1005 in a nutshell. I gave 1005 actually a pretty decent review. And um, I gave The Last Superman a really terrible review. Oh my goodness. That was bad. Um, Bendis is, at this point, I have completely written off Brian Michael Bendis as a complete hack. He can write comics. I No one needs to convince me that he's got talent. No one needs to convince me um, you know, that he's written good stuff in the past. He even writes somewhat decently in this book, but let's see what's going on with it. So, here we have just more evidence of no editing at DC, nothing matters, um, as, <laughs> as proven by Harley Quinn 56. Whew, man, damn. So we got the Martian Manhunter sex scandal. If you haven't read Martian Manhunter number one, there's a sex scene. And some fans were a little bit un upset by this, and so they put this. The problem is, is that sex scene is in the past. That that this is not continuity here, Bendis. That is, uh, and why would she, uh, why would she why would she know this? And Young Justice is back. Why? Why? Yes, we all want to know why, too. Um, apparently, it's to satisfy Bendis' ego. DC is his playground. He just does whatever he wants. No one cares. So here we have the mayor of, any, of sorry, Metropolis. This is what I call the Justice League. Wait, wait, who's this kid? Is that Spider-Man? Spider-Man's not in Justice League. But in Bendis' world, Bendis is famous for Spider-Man, so got to squeak that in there. Um, we got the mayor's annoyed, talking, you know, he, had, he has to deal with kids, and they're like, well, sir, it's a charity for kids. Clark Kent shows up, you know, roving reporter on the scene, Clark Kent, comes up hard-hitting. Can I get a reaction? Blah, 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 to the mayor. And, of course, you know, this typical scene, mayor's trying to get away. Uh, he asks about uh, who told you that the, the, you told the fire department to shut down investigations on a growing number of building fires in the city. And, but the mayor does respond, even though his handler is trying to push away. And you know, you have to make an appointment. So who said that? This is so inappropriate. Ow! I don't know what he ever says ow to. I don't know if Clark stepped on his foot. He just says, "Oh, sorry." Uh, I was having a cup. I have a couple of sources actually. Ow! Ow! What? What? Sorry? What are you sorry for? I don't get it. What I said was once characters like Superman and Batman start sniffing around, the crime scenes get tainted. It's actually, it's actually a fair point, right? Like, that's why law enforcement has to maintain careful um, control of a crime scene, because if a civilian gets in and does anything, it just voids everything, you know, as far as, like, evidence. Um... So, yeah, even though you have superpowers doesn't mean you don't avoid a crime scene. You're not an official 
a law enforcement agent. How so, Mr. Mayor? Um, that's a dumb question, but I guess a reporter would ask it. Once that happens, I'd rather put valuable city resources towards something useful. You should do an article on that. Why is Superman always involving himself in things we don't need him for? You know, this is supposed to be like the scumbag, but he's asked easy. <laughs> he's actually speaking logical. We have a police, we have a fire department. Tell him to stick to space monsters and toy men. That's what we need Superman for. Let people do their jobs. Hey, how's the wife, Kent? Oh, Sting! Sting, you just... The mayor of Metropolis just cucked Clark Kent. Uh, good, Mr. Mayor. I'm sure she sends her regards. What's that like, I wonder? Because I know where my wife is. Oh, jeez, damn! Damn, boy! Twice in two panels, you just cucked Clark Kent unknowingly Superman. Well, back to my question. It seems that the damage could be caused a series of... Blah, 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 blah. Bendis just cucked Superman twice with the bad guy. Well, he's not the bad guy, but he's not. And so Clark Kent doing his normal, uh, I cheat at reporting, doing my Superman powers, listening, blah, 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 blah. Oh, look at that smug face. I feel so proud of myself. I know things are okay. But they're talking about the deputy police chief. And now, oh, look, a concern on his face. Uh oh, she's in danger. I better do something about it. So, you know, Clark Kent's like, oh, what should I do? I'm going to duck down this alley. Hey, there's a kid just chilling here. No worries. I'll just put my finger up to my lips while I'm turning into Superman. And the kid won't say a thing because he's obviously a fan. Not of you, buddy. Not of you. <sighs> Fuck. Nothing matters in Bendis' world. If you recall... Also, in previous, I can't remember if it was Super... I'm pretty sure it was Action Comics. Um, Superman was kissing Lois Lane in public with people literally around her, around the two of them, taking pictures with their cameras. <laughs> so stupid. Stupid! Um, so here we have Gossip Call a secretly Red Cloud supervillain and we got Perry, and they have some good... This is parts I've talked before. Bendis is good at, you know, he does the, the interpersonal uh, dialogue. He's got a lot of practice at this. And, you know, he's got some skills writing this sort of sitcom interaction, uh, TV writing stuff. And I kind of just wish he would go into a writing tank and be a part of that. Um, so... I forget what Superman's looking for something, and so he's using his x-ray vision. And uh, we get this big two-page spread of Clark Kent. Why do we need a two-page spread of Clark Kent using x-ray vision? And for the life of me, I cannot figure out what the hell all these freaking symbols mean. He's just... Whatever. Whatever. Um, and... Jimmy Olsen's talking to him as he's doing his thing, and he's not, he's not listening, and so... Jimmy's saying something like, and that's why I think sleeping with Talia al Ghul was a huge mistake. But everyone's saying, actually, Jimmy, I can't get hold of that thought. And he's like, oh, whatever. And so he's got all this Talia al Ghul stuff, which, is that meaningful? Or is this just Bendis being, trying to be smart and funny? Like, uh, whatever. Uh, here we go. Uh, so we, good night, Chief. Uh, Deputy Chief, but Thanks. And so she's like, huh, something's not right. Weird. Turn around, nothing there. And then it's, uh, you need sleep, sister. Nope. You are right to feel like something bad was about to happen. People can feel it. You'd be surprised at how many times, blah, 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 blah. So the red ghost cloud girl <laughs> is uh, showing up. And she starts infecting her and choking her, even though I think previously she was told not to. I, I don't really understand why this is happening, but so it's like, oh, she's dying, oh, grasp, gasp out of there. That's no good. No good at all. Hey, speaking of Brian Michael Bendis, because we gotta advertise Brian Michael Bendis all the time in DC Comics. 
all the time. Here's Naomi. We don't know anything about her. But we're just going to watch her unlock the DC Universe's biggest secret in Brian Michael Bendis' new imprint at DC Wonder Comics that's part of DC continuity but has a different imprint for some unknown reason. Brian Michael Bendis already had 10 books, I think, before this one. What? what? I, from the co-creator of Miles Morales. You know, because we got to keep plugging that, you know, Spider-Verse movie. It's all oh, Bendis. Bendis taking credit. I don't know anything. All I know is that Bendis just likes to create characters with black girls. That's all I know. My, first, of, he did my, Miles, and then it was just black girls. This girl, by the way, is a black girl. Uh, so, ah, and whoosh, we see this getting blown, and who, of course, shows up, but, dun da da, da Superman. And uh, for some reason, his super breath works this time. If you recall the last issue, when Superman had a fight with her, he tried to use the super breath, and nothing happened. But this time it does. No reason, no explanation in the book as to why last time it didn't work, but this time it did. Um, I don't think I've given you a fair warning, Miss Cloud, so consider this it. Stop. Big talk, alien. We both know what happened last time when we tussled. Yeah, we, we do. Well, if you can remember, if you weren't bored out of your tear, you know. Whoosh, blow, ah, and then here he's flying around doing all that stuff, and um, taste my poison, Boy Scout. Things are gonna change around here. Okay, so one thing I found interesting about it is that she, she's calling him Boy Scout. I thought that was a Batman reference to him. What? Uh, why? Why does she have this? Why would she call him Boy Scout? And why does she have this animosity to Superman? Like, they don't have a previous history. This is just like a randomly new, newly developed villain that just seems to have this motive against Superman that no one understands, least of all the reader. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Fine. Oh, hey, look, more Bendis. More, more Bendis all the time. Just... Just call it Bendis Comics. A standoff? See? You're not in foul it. Whoosh. Take a step back. Think about the path you're on. This is Metropolis. A lot of people have stood where you are right now and... How about die, alien? And he's blowing again. Because this is an exciting fight. A lot of super blowing. Whoo! And so she's rolling around, still facing off. And then, you know, Debbie fight. Can't you blow her into space or something? No. Well, I could. She did just try to kill me. Let's teach her to do better by example. Oh, fuck that. Sorry. Uh, you have an amazing gift. If you're stuck in the middle of something, it'll happen. It'll help get you out. If you need help, I will help you. You can repay. You can start repaying your debt to society by helping me shut whatever this is all down. I was going to say that a great many interest, uh, interesting and powerful people have stood exactly where you are right now, and they made the mistake of taking my empathy for weakness. And more importantly, they forgot that just behind me, there are all kinds of characters just waiting who do not have my patience. You can turn this around. I know you can. And I have to admit, I did like this part of dialogue. I, I'm going to be fair. I'm not just an Bendis hater. Um, I really liked this whole, you mistook my empathy. <laughs> what I was going to say, I wasn't going to threaten you. And uh, she dissipates. And he looks up. So obviously she doesn't take his offer. And he's like, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. Did you, you, know, you let her go? I didn't let her. Uh, I took the liberty of checking out my three. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they have this dialogue. And uh, she's like, I really thought I was dead. Yeah, that's not the best feeling. 
And so you heard, I fought the Boy Scout twice and I didn't lose. Did you win? I didn't lose, Mr. Strong. Because, you know, you don't have to win in 2019. Just don't lose. That's, that's, that, wow, yeah, there, there's no, that's like walking away from a shark attack, but that is why she hired you. Uh, respect, Mr. Strong. I think this changes things, and I think I should be talking to her directly. She knew you were going to say that. This way, she's here. Sorry, I had to answer the door. Um, she, so she's here, she's waiting. What? So who's this mystery person? So she gets let in, and it's like, oh, hello? Close the door. This room is made for special occasions. Sit with me. It's very nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. And not just because you pay me. I know. Um, so we get this reveal with this woman who might be someone established in DC. I don't know. As everyone knows, you should know I'm not the DC expert. I'm discovering DC as a new DC fan, longtime Marvel um, person. And she's got this sign up. I don't think it's going to show in the video, but it says, My name is Leon. Or Leone. It could be yes, Leone, I'm, I'm guessing. Add that to the list of things we never say. So she's like, uh, yes, I cheated a little. We have scientists, scientists working power set algorithms to keep an eye on these things. Looking for new people who I might recruit or headhunt. And you're right, what happened today, this does change things. So she sits her down, is like basically telling her, you know, blah, blah, blah. Kind of work together, whatever. And this is crime organization, and they've worked under Superman's nose for decades. Blah, 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 blah. And um, at first I'm like, okay, well, this makes sense. She just wants to keep the status quo and, you know, keep working and do business without Superman knowing. But then she's like, oh, I have an idea in this regard. It's a back-to-basics approach. It sends a bold message without making the same mistakes so many others have. Oh, I love a new plan. And it's good timing, because while you were busy doing your thing, Bendis was writing four other titles. How many titles does Bendis have? I bought the Daily Planet. Oh, should make things interesting. Cool. Can I have Lois Lane's office? Yeah, sure. And then there's the famous car, I believe, Action Comics number one. So that's it. That's Superman. No joke. Classy move, DC. Rest in peace, Stanley. You're missed. Um, that is Action Comics 1006. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all that happens. It's It's nothing. Superman runs around, blows, whoosh, cloud girl away, and uh, other mystery woman buys the Daily Planet. We've never seen her before. Whatever. We are now six issues into Action Comics, and still nothing has happened. Still, 1004, this guy got cucked. <laughs> He's continuing to get cucked. It, wh why do people like this series i don't get it <laughs> like this comic as i said in the, about the previous comic in a vacuum it's not terribly offensive right it it is what it is um wow like if you see my review on harley quinn 56 that's freaking offensive that's this is just ben is being a hack and using his name to just poop out scripts and let people go oh Brian Michael Bendis so you're amazing I'll, whatever but nothing happens we are now in issue 6 this story technically started in Man of Steel right both the stories that are going on in Man of Steel and Superman sorry in Action Comics and Superman started in Man of Steel it was a two like a, a fork like a two sided story and then they diverged when the miniseries ends into action comics and superman the fire line the fire storyline part of man of steel 
went into this book, and the Rogel Czar storyline of Man of Steel went to Superman. And then these books don't cross, which is so weird because they were both part of the same storyline of Man of Steel, and now that they're in separate books, these books never cross. There's no sort of continuity ties between them at all. So we're technically 12 issues into this whole fire thing. Nothing has happened. Um, I did a roast, if you can call it that. I ranted on Action Comics 1004. That's the really bad issue. That's the one where I can rant about Bendis and, and all the horrific things that he's doing. This has got some stupid things, but mostly the problem with this book is it's just it's just fluff. It's just nonsense. Literally, it is like uh, Bendis was sitting on the pot. I mean, like, oh, shoot, another deadline. i got to get another issue of uh, Action Comics out. Uh, let's have Red Miss show up and harass the fire chief girl, and then Superman shows up and blows and blows and blows and, uh, you know, <laughs> and then she goes away, and then uh, we see her talk to the other boss that we've never seen, and she buys a daily... Okay, cool, the end. <laughs> it... Why are people paying $3.99 for this? This is Action Comics. This should be a flagship title. Read my review of Detective Comics, uh, $9.95, and it is just... It just trounces this book. This is Tomasi, who used to write... Well, Superman... Not Action Comics, but who was writing this before Bendis had to be given the reins. King Bendis, anointed, um, is just showing everyone how to write comics. He's doing a fantastic job, and this is just a joke. This is just skating by on a name and a reputation, and people who love Superman, who don't necessarily care about nonsense and just like their books, just whatever, and like the Bend to Speak, I don't know. Just So here's my review. It's longer than I expected, but I hope you like it. It's a thumbs down, obviously. Um, yeah, but it's not as egregiously bad as before, but it kind of is because it still continues the storyline that... God, you got cucked twice by the mayor. God, what a joke. <laughs>